a team today. I want to compare the Dragon Squat and the Pistol Squat. Two single leg squats that a lot of people have goals to do. It looks really cool. It can be a party trick. But overall, it's an amazing way to express your single leg strength and coordination. So I want to talk about the differences, the differences in some modifications, and which might be better depending on your goal, what type of athlete you are, or what type of training you are going for. All right, so, so before you start to try and do these at home after watching this video without warming up at all, Unless you're an anomaly that has incredible ankle mobility, if you're already a weightlifter, you're probably not going to be able to drop into a pistol squat or a dragon squat without any type of discomfort or tightness. So the first thing we want to focus on is how loose can we get the calves to start. Calves and your ankle mobility is where you want to start to warm up either the dragon squat, the pistol squat, or both. So I actually just sprained my ankle this week, so this will be really fun to demonstrate this stuff today. So I'm going to try to really do my best, use some other variations. But number one, let's start with mobilizing your calves and your ankles. All right, so now that we have warmed up properly, giving the calves and the ankles some mobility and flexibility work, let's break down how they look and the differences. A dragon squat looks very similar to a curtsy lunge when you start. This is my working leg. This is my floating leg that I'm actually going to swing back around as I contort my upper body to really load up this single leg. And I get as low as I can, shooting this other leg out and theoretically not touching here, not using this, coming back up. There's a lot of impressive videos of people doing that without any assistance. Now you can see it's much more rotational than what I'm about to do as the pistol squat. The pistol squat. Kind of looks like a pistol. As this floating leg stays as straight as possible, reaching forward usually, getting all the way down there. And it's much more straightforward, literally straightforward in that plane of motion. Much less complex than the dragon squat where you're having to contort a lot. So big differences are just what it looks like in the major muscle groups active. In a pistol squat, let's use some weight that I'll get to in a minute. As I go down there, I am feeling most of the work happening on this quadricep group. My ankle mobility is being tested, and obviously if I'm holding something, my upper body is having to stabilize. So a little simpler. Whereas your dragon squat, you have to really use this ankle mobility to compress your body, coil into this hip and glute muscles as you control this coordination to really almost get completely 90 degrees over with that torso. So it's much more complex with the planes of motion you're working in. If you can really translate that dragon squat into something that looks like a curtsy lunge or a skater where I can suddenly produce force going that way or changing directions, it looks more like an athlete. Personally, my coaching philosophy, I like to train everyone like an athlete because I think everyone wants to express their fitness, their strength into things outside of the weight room. If you're an athlete, obviously, for performance, to win. But if you're someone that just wants to be able to go hike, play pickup basketball, go surfing, whatever it is, be active, you want to use a lot of groups and movements that feel like it translates. Now, I'm not saying a pistol squat doesn't translate, but how often in life are you going to be leaning? But it's a very good movement to localize quad strength, ankle mobility, and just coordination and it's a cool party trick. <laughs> Let's get into what we can do to train up to it and some regressions or different variations. All right, some dragon squat variations. So what I will do is actually have my hands on a bench, or in this case, a medicine ball, and go through this where I'm really thinking about trying to keep all my weight on this leg as I swing that floating leg back on the towel and just start to get into a very deep curtsy lunge. It's really just a deep curtsy lunge where I'm swinging this toe as far as I can on that towel as it slides back to really feel that compression and torque on the hip joint there. Full range of motion is my favorite way to really attack this movement when I'm using the TRX. You could also attach a band up there. But as I'm doing this, again, always focusing on keeping most of my weight on this front leg, and I'm actually staying loose on the straps until I absolutely need to really grip it. And you can see now this is the deepest one I have done yet. So hands on the bench, hands on a ball, take one hand away, use a towel on that leg or TRX, something high to help you get back up. Those are some great modifications to be able to do it. 
Also, you could elevate yourself on a few plates just to really work on being able to sink into that curtsy-like start of the dragon squat and even holding some weight. Pistol squat variations. Again, you don't need too much. And this first one, you don't need anything. All you need is to be able to stand up and eye up a target on the floor. Keep this leg straight, toes up. And that target on the floor, I'm going to shoot for it with my heel. Keeping this foot flat, let's take a sideways look, as long as I can. Now your heel might pop up if your ankle mobility isn't great, but this movement alone is going to really provide some excellent work on the quad group and developing that ankle mobility. Now my goal is to reach that foot forward, touch the ball, and stand back up without touching this foot down. So obviously, start high, get lower. My goal is now to get lower, and I will add some counterweight because I am not that great at pistol squats. My ankle mobility definitely can benefit from more pistol squatting, but you see how using the counterweight now really helps me to be able to get down there. And then if I can't stand up, I could even just use two legs. Now some of us will really struggle with even getting into a deep position where we're having to keep our torso up. So having this variation where you're high up, using some load, I have like 10 pounds here, doing the same movement, but now I'm keeping it a little more hip dominant. You can see my torso is starting to tilt forward as I'm working on the single leg strength on this hip. That facilitates greater control. And also if we struggle with the balance, a little bit of descending, that is another fantastic way to do it. That is the huge list of variations you can try. See what you like more, pistol or dragon squat, comment. Let me know what you like better. And please subscribe to the channel so I can keep these videos coming your way. But this is the dragon versus the pistol squat. Try out this video as well to mobilize that area so that the squat gets a little bit better.